Many thanks to my awesome patron supporters and fine tool partners. Thank you very much. Well, we've designed the lowers. Now, let's design the uppers. So the designs of the uppers are gonna be really, really simple. So I'm gonna make this video fairly quick. Uh, you really only have to accommodate the two sides, the bottom and the top, making sure that you accommodate joinery for it all. And then the back is simply gonna be a half inch thick piece that will allow you to be able to screw it to the wall and it will hold without a problem. You could put nailers behind the half inch back, but it's not necessarily a necessity. I didn't do that on these and these things are holding up great. So I wanna take the time real quick to welcome you all. If you have not subscribed yet and you like videos like this with SketchUp and Build videos, hit the subscribe button right now, click that notification bell and it will tell you anytime I upload new content. So now let me take you inside the computer of SketchUp and let's get busy. All right, so let's add on to this particular tutorial that we started last time. Now I've already taken the time to make a countertop to make this thing overall 36 inches tall. So now the standard for upper cabinets is where we're going to begin. So the, the distance between cabinets on an upper and a lower is typically going to be 18 inches. So we can measure up 18 and that will be the very bottom of the cabinet. That includes the base frame, not just the bottom of the shelf. Uh, so you cannot exceed this 18 mark. This just gives adequate space for people to put things underneath the upper cabinet on their countertop, such as KitchenAid mixers and things like that. As far as the depth goes, you're typically gonna find cabinets that are gonna be about uh, 12 inches, 12 and a half inches deep. Um, now you can alter this a little bit, but the thing that you have to pay real close attention are the types of things that people are going to put in those cabinets. So since you're making custom cabinetry, the best thing to do is try and find out from the homeowner what is the biggest thing that they may be putting in this cabinet that might prevent uh, prevent it from being stored if you make the cabinet too uh, not so deep, not not deep enough. Um, but the the dimensions, and I think I have it uh, mostly 12 inches deep, uh, but they can vary. Um, and then typical height is anywhere between 36 and 42. And we'll make the 12 inch deep mark right there. And we'll just use the back line for reference and we'll just make the 36 inch tall cabinet. So there are my reference lines right there. Um, I'll go ahead and make some reference lines off the side of the cabinet because we'll just kind of make this match. Uh, so these will probably be double door cabinets down here so this upper cabinet will probably be the same uh, 31 inches wide is is pretty wide for a, a single door so I'll just push and pull a template out and I'm just gonna save it as a group and then I'm just gonna get rid of all of the faces and just leave the skeleton just like that and I can get rid of all of my lines. So that is the border that I cannot exceed. And keep in mind, this does not include the door. So if you have full overlay doors, uh, that's gonna add another three quarters of an inch distance, maybe a little bit more with the hardware in place. Um, but typically three quarters of an inch thickness will be added to the overall depth of this cabinet once you put the doors on. Uh, but this does include the face frame. So, Let's start with the side cabinet real quick. We'll start with the rectangle tool and just draw, connect the dots and push and pull it in 0.75 inches. And then I'm gonna move it. First, let me save it as a component. So cabinet side. And then let's just move it in that eighth inch that we usually give for the overhang. Oh, actually it's a 16th, I'm sorry. Let's move it back a 16th of an inch. One, there we go. And that will be the overhang of the face frame that we are going to put in place. Let's push it back um, in the front here, 0.75, and that will allot room for the face frame when we put it on. Okay, so now we can go ahead and make a copy. 
and I'll just kind of drop it here first. Then drag it and then push it in that sixteenth of an inch off that line that we snapped it to. So as you can see, we're inside a sixteenth of an inch here and it's the same way on the other side. And then I've got a three quarter inch gap between this line and my cabinet side. Now the top is usually done with a rabbit. So we'll drop down 0.75 inches here and then create a rectangle off of that reference line and push it in 0.25 inches for the rabbit. The bottom the face frame is 2.25 inches And then we'll go down 0.75 inches. So this is where the bottom will be. And the face frame will be right flush with it, 0.25 deep. Now, one thing I didn't do yet, and you guys can see how this works when you flip objects. Uh, so I didn't flip this uh, along the red axis to make sure that it's kind of a mirror of each other. So as you can see, as I copied it and brought it over, um, the sides stayed the same. So I need to flip it along the red axis. So now everything is now mirrored and the joints are all on the inside of the cabinet. All right, so let's come over here and make a rectangle for the top. Right there, push, pull it down and snap it to that line. Make this a component and we'll call it cabinet top, upper. And let's go ahead and copy. We can bring it down here to the dado we made. All right. Now let's push in the top and the bottom. Actually, you know what? I'm going to change something. I want to make this bottom unique. I want to leave the top exactly how it is. Um, and we'll push the bottom in one inch. That'll give us a half inch back and then a half inch gap for scribing. Now let's make this unique. Pull it back out to where it was because I forgot to do that before I did this. So now Let's make the dado, which is one inch in and a half inch thick. There we go. Use our rectangle tool and we'll draw out the groove. And then pop that there. Drag it in 0.25 inches and then get rid of the two divider lines that you see right there to make it all solid. So now we have our cabinet back groove. We can go ahead and make that. Oop, let's get rid of that one too. There we go. Now we'll just click out of that component and make our back zoom in to where I can see the bottom. Now you can make the bottom flush or you don't necessarily have to but if you don't want to see the grooves that you made for the joinery I suggest taking it all the way down. And then push pull it out to the edge of that dado. Save it as a component, cabinet back upper Okay, and then we can unhide the top. There we go. And now let's just add the face frames. Start with the style first. And 
just pop it to that line and then draw 2.25 reference line here and then pop it to that and then we're just going to move the face frame over to that 16th inch mark get rid of our lines there and save this as a component and we'll just call it upper style now let's just copy it real quick and move it over right there and flip it along the red axis so it's all mirrored okay now draw a rail same way so you can see the inside pop it drag it do a 2.25 reference line and then drag to that mark just like that and then save that as a component and we'll just call it upper rail and we will copy that and drag it down and there we go so you can go as far now as putting in adjustable shelf pins, you can go ahead and make your doors, you can even put crown molding at the top of this. But that is how to design your cabinetry for the upper. You just gotta know your standard dimensions and find out exactly what the client is going to be putting in these cabinets and you can make your adjustments as necessary. So I hope that was informative enough. Like I said, it was actually pretty easy and quick to do. If you're interested on those uh, shelf pin holes or even the crown molding, I did do videos on those and you can find those in the tutorials of the playlist for SketchUp for Woodworkers. Uh, and that will be in the card that you'll be able to find right up there. And if you are interested in any of my prior SketchUp videos, or maybe my build videos that I have in the past, and I got a lot of them, <laughs> you'll find them right over there. Also, do not forget, you can hit that subscribe circle button that has my pretty mug right in the center of it, and you can subscribe to the channel and be notified when I upload new content. I wanna thank you guys for joining me on this episode, and I'll see you on the next one. Boom!